then uh, mcqs are also there that uh, starts from beginner level to expert level that consists of standard multiple choice questions then also on oracle we provide personalized counseling session and uh, there are some subscription plan provided by oracle starting from the basic plan to premium plan basic plan is of 3 months pre standard plan is of 6 month and the premium plan is of 12 month which cost around 50000 the services are included like pre recorded class live class live dot clarification one to one personalized guidance notes quick revision examination module and also for 20% distant discount you can use my code double a n c h a l angel 20 So let's start with today's topic, that is platelet. So we're going to start with the clinical case scenario, and this clinical case scenario we're going to discuss in the end of the session. So a forty-year-old male with a history of chronic alcohol abuse, present with bleeding gums, apoplexis, and heavy menstrual bleeding in his wife. Laboratory finding show a prolonged bleeding time normal platelet count and decreased platelet aggregation with risotecin which of the following disorder is most likely to be present in the patient and the options are barnard sulier syndrome uh, glanzman thrombasthenia wallbrenden syndrome and ldl so this question we going to discuss in the end of the session okay so starting with the today's topic so as we know the one of the key factor to maintain homeostasis is hemostasis right platelet play a vital role in maintaining hemostasis along with clotting mechanism when vessels is injured so as to prevent bleeding and in this chapter we'll be discussing overview of hemostasis role of platelet structure and function and related disorder so please student remember that both the thing homeostasis and hemostasis are different homeostasis means the maintenance of internal body environment and the hemostasis stands for the spontaneous erupt of bleeding that we going to discuss usually student get confused with both of these terms homeostasis and hemostasis so please remember okay now starting with the today's topic so we have the function of platelets but first we going to learn about the morphology so when we discuss about the morphology so as we know the platelets are also known as thrombocytes right so platelets are thrombocytes and they are small fragments very very small fragments also colorless and non nucleated please remember that they are always colorless and non nucleated and also they are moderately refractile formed elements of blood okay now why they are known as moderately refractile form uh, refractile formed elements of blood so that we going to learn now talking about the size of platelets so the size of platelets is is diameter is range between 2 to 4 mu and the volume is 7.5 cubic mm okay now talking about the shape so normally the shape uh, can be of several type like it can be of spherical rod shaped and also become oval or disc shape when it got inactivated okay so the shape of the platelets always varies right now talking about <clears throat> uh, more things that platelets or thrombocytes are small colorless and non nucleated cells the shape is spherical or rod shaped when activated and become oval or disc shape when become inactivated this statement is very very important another thing as we have discussed the size uh, range between 1 to 4 micrometer in diameter and uh, the normal count of the platelets is 2.5 lakh and usually it range between 1.5 to 4 lakhs all right per cubic millimeter and the lifespan of these platelets are 7 to 10 days right 
now talking about the blood vessels so as we know uh, the blood vessels has the these three layer tunica adventitia media and intima and also from these blood vessels the these blood vessels consist these three major types of cells and one of these are platelet right and when we talk about the um, structure of the uh, platelets so the structure and composition of platelets includes includes cell membrane microtubule and cytoplasm right so these are the three important structure that are present in the structure of uh, platelets so the cell membrane or it is also known as surface membrane it is approximately uh, 6 nanometer thick and extensive invagination extensive invagination like this right so extensive invagination of the cell membrane opens or forms as an canalicular system right so this is the canalicular system and this canalicular system is responsible or it is a delicate tunnel system through which the platelet uh, is going to extrude their content okay so from this open canalicular system the platelet is going to extrude their contents right now the cell membrane of platelets contain very important three substances those are glycoprotein phospholipid and also lipoprotein okay so now we are going to talk about glycoprotein and phospholipids okay so the glycoprotein are basically um, present uh, glycoprotein are responsible for preventing the adherence of platelets to normal endothelium but they also accelerate the adherence of platelets to collagen now what is adherence why this adherence is important that we're going to learn in hemostasis now talking about the phospholipids so these phospholipids accelerate the clotting reaction okay so whatever the clotting reaction occurring inside the body the phospholipids are going to accelerate the reaction and the phospholipid form the precursor for thromboxane A2 and other prostaglandin related substances. Now what is prostaglandin? What is thromboxane A2? That also we are going to discuss in hemostasis. Now only you should all remember that these phospholipids are very very important for accelerating the clotic reaction and also they form the precursor for thromboxane A2 and prostaglandin related substances. Right? Now, so this is all about the cell membrane. Now next we have microtubule. Now what is microtubule? As we can see in the picture also, the microtubule form a ring around cytoplasm below the cell membrane, right? And these microtubule are made up of polymerized protein and these proteins are known as tubulin, right? So protein are known as tubulin. Now, these tubules provide structural support for the inactivated platelets to maintain the disc-like shape. So, because of these proteins, the shape of the main, uh, inactivated platelet remain maintained. Okay. Then, last we have cytoplasm. So, as we know, the cytoplasm of platelets contain various organelles as we can see right as golgi apparatus is there endoplasmic reticulum my mitochondria microtubule blood vessels filamental granules various things are also there right along with all these um, organelles the cytoplasm also contains some chemical substances okay so chemical substances like protein enzyme hormonal substances so about that we're going to discuss that in cytoplasm other than organelles other substances are also there for example proteins are there so those protein include example uh, contractile protein contractile protein like actin myosin and thrombus right now 
both actin and myosin are responsible for the contraction of platelet. Just a minute. Are responsible for the contraction of platelets and this <clears throat> this one thrombostinin is responsible for clot retraction. Now what is Yes. So, uh, whenever the size of the clot reduces to 40% of, it or, of its original volume, that time it is known as clot retraction. Okay. So, other than these proteins, some other things are also there like Von Wilbrand factor. Now, what is Von Wilbrand factor? This is factor number 13. Right? Uh, some, I'm so sorry. Okay. So, factor number 13 is fibrin stabilizing factor. Okay. So, this is factor number 13. And this wall membrane factor is responsible for the adherence of platelets and also this is responsible for the regulation of plasma level of factor number 8 okay so this is all about the um, cytop the cytoplasmic proteins which are present in platelets now next we have some enzymes so talking about those enzymes so enzymes includes adenosine triphosphatase or ATPase and the enzymes necessary for synthesis of prostaglandins. Now, what is the role of prostaglandins that we're going to discuss in detail? Okay, then also other hormonal substances are also there present inside cytoplasm. So, those hormonal substances include adrenaline and histamine. Okay. So, this is all about the contents which are present inside cytoplasm other than the organelles. Right. Now, some platelet granule contents are also present which basically release through the extension that we have learned through the uh, canalicular system and they are released on activation, right? Now, these content includes alpha granules, which have uh, like beta, thromboglobulin, platelet, factor number four, uh, fibrinogen, and enthalpic glycoproteins. It includes P-selectin, von Wimbrand factor, coagulation factor five, and both factors. And also some dense granules are also present in which... in which it includes calcium ions and serotonin. Okay, so this is all about the content which is present inside the platelets. But these granules are released only upon activation through the canalicular system. Okay, so this is all to remember and must to remember. Okay, now we have a question for all the students that platelets are formed from what type of cells? And the options are melanocytes, macrophages, astrocytes and megakaryocytes. You have 10 seconds to answer. Yes, the answer is mega karyocyte. All the students, please remember that a very large cell is present that is known as mega karyocyte. 
and from this large cell a small small fragments are formed and those fragments are known as platelets right okay now next we have uh, we're going to discuss about the normal count and variation right so we know the normal count range between 1.5 to 4 lakhs now we're going to talk about the variation so in variation we're going to discuss several factors like age so platelets are less than infants and reaches normal level when the uh, infant or when the baby become of third month right so in infant it will be less and reach normal level at third month life okay now next we have the difference between male and female so uh, there is no as such difference in platelet count uh, between male and female but in females it reduce during the process of menstruation okay now talking about the high altitude so whenever the person reaches a high altitude it will get increase okay then what are the changes that occurs after taking meals? So, after taking food, the platelet count is going to increase. Okay. So, this is all about the variation that occurs um, with the age, sex, high altitude and after meal. Okay. Now, next we are going to discuss the properties, the major properties of platelets. Okay, so platelets show very important three properties. First, we have adhesiveness. Then second, we have aggregation. And last, we have agglutination. So please remember all these properties uh, because the, all these properties are going to play a very important role in the process of hemostasis also. So first we're going to discuss about adhesiveness. So what is ad adhesiveness? This is a property of sticking to a rough surface. So what happened whenever any kind of injury is there inside blood vessels? So endothelium is damaged. Here endothelium get damaged and the subendothelial oil collagen get exposed. Right? So this uh, subendothelial collagen is going to expose. So while coming in contact with collagen, the platelet are get, get activated. Okay, so whenever any kind of injury is there, so as the collagen get exposed, then the platelet get activated and also they become adhered to collagen. So here there will be adherence of platelets. Okay, so the adhesion of platelets involve interaction between wall windrun factor secreted by damaged endothelium and a receptor protein that is known as glycoprotein situated on the surface of platelet membrane and other factors are also there which are responsible for accelerating the adhesiveness are collagen, thrombin and ADP, right? So this is all about the adhesiveness. Adhesiveness means the property of sticking to a rough surface whenever there is any kind of injury inside the blood vessel, right? Now next we're going to discuss the aggregation. So what is aggregation? This is the grouping, grouping of platelets, right? Now, adhesion is followed by activation of many platelet by substances released from dense granule of platelets that already we have discussed like uh, ADP, thrombin, okay. So, these um, are responsible for the activation also. Now, activation of platelets, so what happened during activation, the platelet change their shape with elongation of long filamental pseudopodia. So, upon activation, the pseudopodia will be there and <clears throat> there will be activation and aggregation of platelets will be accelerated with the help of ADP and thromboxane A2, right? So what is aggregation? Aggregation is the grouping of platelets which uh, an adhesion is followed by activation of many platelets by the substances that are released from dense granules of 
platelet. Now then last we have agglutination, right? So agglutination already we know. The agglutination is the clumping of cells, okay? So as we here we're talking about platelets. So the agglutination is the clumping together of platelets, right? And aggregated platelet are agglutinated by the action of some platelet agglutinins and platelet activating factor. So for the process of agglutination, two things are responsible. First, we have platelet agglutinin and second platelet activating factor. Right. So this is all about the properties of platelet. Now next we have functions. So already we know that function in function the first and the most important is role in blood clotting. Right. So platelets are responsible for the formation of intrinsic prothrombin activator and this substance is responsible for the onset of blood clotting mechanism, right? Now, next we have role in clot retraction. So, as already we have discussed what is clot retraction whenever the size of the clot reduced to 40% of its original volume. So, what happened in blood clot, the blood cells including platelets are entrapped in between the fibrin thread. Right now, the cytoplasm of platelets which contain contractile protein. So please remember that the cytoplasm of platelets also contain contractile protein. Just we have discussed contractile protein like actin, myosin. Right now, these protein are responsible for the process of clot retraction. Right now, third we have. Hemostasis. So hemostasis we're going to discuss in detail. Uh, so basically what is hemostasis? This is the spontaneous arrest of bleeding by some physiological processes. And the fourth we have role in defense mechanism. Right. So by the property of agglutination, just we have discussed the protein encircle the foreign bodies and also destroy them. Okay. So this is all about the major function that is performed by platelets. Now we're going to discuss a little about platelet disorder. Then we're going to proceed towards the process of hemostasis. So in platelet disorder, we have thrombocytopenia. thrombocytosis and we were discussing about platelet disorder thrombocytopenia then thrombocytosis and the last we have thrombocythemia Okay, so as the name refers, thrombocytopenia. Penia means decrease in platelet count. Cytosis means increase in platelet count. Right? And cythemia means persistent and abnormal increase in platelet. Right? So, first we are going to discuss about thrombocytopenia. So, as we know, thrombocytopenia means there is decrease in platelet count and it could be occur in the condition like chicken pox, in case of acute infection, then uh, acute leukemia. So these are the condition in which the platelet count can be decreased, right? Now next we have thrombocytosis. So thrombocytosis refers to increase in platelet count and it could be occur in the case of hemorrhage, in case of bone fracture or in allergy condition. Now 
The last we have thrombocytopenia uh, means whenever there is persistent and abnormal more and more increase in platelet count, right? And it occurs usually in the condition like carcinoma or whenever chronic leukemia is there. Okay. Okay, so always remember thrombocytopenia in, uh, occurs in uh, acute leukemia and in chronic leukemia, the condition of thrombocytemia will be seen. Okay, so this is all about the platelet disorder. Now, we're going to discuss about a very important phenomena, a very important process that is homeostasis, sorry, hemostasis. So, what happened during the case of hemostasis, one by one, uh, with the help of a flow chart, we're going to learn. Okay. Now, what is hemostasis? Hemostasis means... Hemostasis means spontaneous arrest of bleeding by some physiological processes, right? So, this is spontaneous arrest of bleeding right by some physiological processes okay so the mechanism of hemostasis includes platelet adhesion then it includes platelet activation And it also includes platelet aggregation. Right? Now, what is platelet aggregation? So, whenever a blood vessel is injured, okay, whenever there is an injury in blood vessel, so what will happen as we have discussed the property of platelets adherence, right? So, the platelets stick to the exposed collagen. Here, platelets is going to stick to the exposed collagen, laminin and wall windrun factor present on the endothelium cells in the blood vessel, right? This property is known as platelet adhesion and platelet uh, adhesion is promoted by two important things. The first is calcium ion and the second is ADP. Okay, so again remember whenever a blood vessel is injured, so platelets is going to adhere or is going to stick to the exposed collagen, right? Now, second we have platelet activation. Now, what is platelet activation? So, platelet binding to exposed collagen, right? Platelets are binding to exposed collagen is going to initiate this platelet activation and also this is produced by ADP and thrombin, right? So, platelet binding to exposed collagen is uh, going to initiate this platelet activation, right? Now, <clears throat> the, plate, the activated platelet is going to, these platelet, uh, activated platelets is going to discharge the granules and also they're going to change their shape. Right? So, in shape, what they are going to do? They are going to put out pseudopodia. So, first, they are going to change their shape. Second, they are going to discharge the granules. So, various granules we have studied till now. So, they are going to discharge the granule content. And third, they are going to stick to each other and causing the platelet aggregation. So, by all these things, the uh, phenomena, the process of platelet aggregation is going to initiate, right? Now, this platelet aggregation is also increased by 
प्लेटलेट एक्टिवेशन फैक्टर ओके इंक्रीज बाय प्लेटलेट एक्टिवेशन फैक्टर व्हाट इज दिस प्लेटलेट एक्टिवेशन फैक्टर दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ साइटोकाइन सिक्रीटेड बाय डब्ल्यू बी सी लाइक न्यूट्रोफिल मोनोसाइट एंड ऑल्सो बाय सम प्लेटलेट सेल मेम्रेन रूट लिपिड्स राइट नाउ व्हाट विल हैपन वेन एवर देर इज प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन इज देअ so this platelet aggregation is going to activate phospholipase c right so this is a protein this is a phospholipid which is present in the membrane of the platelet so this platelet aggregation is going to activate phospholipase c which in turn again going to activate phospholipase a2 right so with the help of this aggregation this phospholipase c is going to activate and which in turn is going to activate phospholipase a2 and this is going to release a very important substance which is known as arachidonic uh, acid and whenever there is release in this arachidonic acid so what will happen <clears throat> this cause the release of arachidonic acid which in turn get converted into two substances the first we have thromboxane a2 and second we have prostacyclin okay now what is the role of thromboxane a2 and prostacyclin the both have a very important significant role that we are going to learn now what this thromboxane a2 is going to do this will increase platelet aggregation more and more platelet aggregation will be there which along with the platelet adhesion which is useful for the formation of temporary hemostatic plug so with the help of this phenomena there will be formation of temporary hemostatic plug as this thromboxane a2 is going to uh, <clears throat> do more and more platelet aggregation along with platelet adhesion okay now this cause stoppage of bleeding from the injured blood vessel and maintain the integrity of the vascular tree okay so whenever this temporary hemostatic plug will get formed so Uh, with this there will be stoppage of bleeding now what is the role of this prostacyclin that also we going to learn so this prostacyclin what it will do it will inhibit the thromboxane a2 it will inhibit this thromboxane a2 formation why because so that to prevent further platelet aggregation and keeping the platelet plug localized okay this thromboxane a2 is needed to inhibit so that the plug formation remain in a limited area otherwise this thromboxane a2 is going to aggregate all the platelets present inside the body and will cause the blood clotting so the role of prostacyclin is very very important that it inhibit the formation of thromboxane a2 so this is all about the process of hemostasis and now we going to learn this process of hemostasis with the help of a flow chart so what happens whenever there is injury to blood vessel and damage of endothelium is there so what will happen there will be exposure of collagen right so whenever there is exposure of collagen what will happen there will be adherence of platelets occur to collagen that already we have studied right now it will lead to activation of other platelets right now what will happen three things will happen 
one by one we're going to understand so this activation of platelet will cause stage 1 in which there will be secretion of serotonin now why this secretion of serotonin is important because it will cause the vasoconstriction so that the flow of blood can be reduced to that particular area so here the process of vasoconstriction is very very important and that is caused by the serotonin okay now second thing or stage two what will happen there will be aggregation of platelet and it will cause the plug formation or we can call it the formation of temporary hemostatic plug right the stage third now what will happen there will be formation of prothrombin activator and this prothrombin activator is responsible for the process of blood clotting right so this is all about how the process of hemostasis take place right so now we're going to learn with the help of slides. So in rapture blood vessels, pain impulse from the site of trauma as well as from the surrounding nervous tissue originate and reach the spinal cord and from the spinal cord order signal arise. The order signal uh, pass the sympathetic nerves lead through spasm of the uh, vessels. Local muscles also contribute to vascular vasospasm and lo local autocoid factors from the traumatized tissue and plate blood platelet. Now what will happen? The vasos spasm lasts for almost half an hour indirectly proportional to the intensity of trauma. Now what will happen? Uh, formation of the platelet plug will be there with the help of uh, platelet radiation followed by platelet activation. Just we have seen followed by platelet aggregation and hence the formation of hemostatic plug will be there. Right? So mechanism already we have discussed all. Now we are going to learn the development right now the part that this development part is also very very important so what happened as we have seen all the cells are arise from the pluripotent stem cells right pluripotent uncommitted stem cells so here also from this pluripotent stem cells there will be form or formation of platelets okay so very big cell is there that is known as megakaryocytes from megakaryocytes there will be formation of megakaryoblasts and then there will be formation of mega pro megakaryocyte and from pro megakaryocyte there will be formation of megakaryocytes and finally this megakaryocytes will rupture and it will leads to formation of very small small fragments and those fragments are known as platelets okay so this mega karyocyte is a big cell right is a irregular ring of lobe nuclei in a very big cells so what happened platelet formation begin with the formation of micro vessels which join to form a membrane for platelets so from the this mega karyocyte how many platelet can be formed this very from this very large cells about 2000 to 4000 small fragments can be produced and these small small fragments are known as platelets okay so this is all about the development that is occurred from the mother cell that is known as pluripotent uncommitted mother cell a stem cell now, the regulator of uh, thrombopoiesis, we have a hormone that is known as thrombopoietin released by kidney. Then the regulator of platelet productions are there also there. Uh, it is produced by liver and kidney. Levels are increased in case of thrombocytopenia and reduced in thrombocytosis as we have seen. And uh, it increases the number and rate of maturation of the megakaryocytes. Now, the factor that activate uh, platelets are ADP, thrombin, collagen, 5-hydroxy, tryptamine that is known as serotonin, thromboxin A2 and some mechanical stimuli also there and <clears throat> several different receptors and multiple signaling pathways. 
Okay, now you have an MCQ and I know all the students will be able to answer. What do you mean by hemostasis? The production of new blood cells, process by which bleeding stops from the damaged blood, blood vessels, normal body condition and none of the above. You have 10 seconds to answer. Yes, the answer is B. Process by which bleeding stops from the damaged blood vessels. Now we're going to discuss about platelet disorders. So platelet disorders are the most common cause of bleeding and the disorder could be decrease in number and that condition is known as thrombocytopenia or defective function. So thrombocytopenia means loss of platelets from the circulation faster than the rate of their production by the bone marrow. So thrombocytopenia is due to First, the failure of platelet production, the most common cause whenever megakaryocytes are decreased in the bone marrow due to presence of several ducts inside body. Second, the rate of removal of platelets from the circulation get increased. Then what happened in case of chronic immunothrombocytopenia? So <clears throat> it can be due to autoimmune disease in which antibodies are formed against the antigen of platelet surfaces. Usually adults, young female of, of age between 15 to 50 years are there. And also um, these in these conditions, it show the fluctuating course with period in which platelets number return to normal. Then uh, next we have uh, another condition that we're going to discuss already all these things we have discussed. Yes, now we have Gelman's disease. So what is this? This is an autosomal recessive inheritance in which normal platelet count and appearance is there. No clump. No clumps are seen on peripheral blood uh, film. No platelet clumps are there. It occurs due to decreased surface membrane glycoprotein and which leads to failure of primary aggregation and platelet do not aggregate with all aggregating agents, but they aggregate with histocytin and bleeding time is also get long in Glanzmann's disease. So this is all about the characteristics features of Glanzmann's disease. Okay. Another thing, the acquired disorder of platelet function, which causes due to drug like aspirin, myeloproliferative disorder, paraproteinemia in case of multiple myeloma, cardiopulmonary bypass, autoimmune disease, or in case of renal failure. Right. So acquired disorder of platelet function. So the biggest example we have of aspirin, which is the most common cause of acquired platelet function disorder, and aspirin reversibly affect the cyclo uh, oxygenase enzyme. The last of, uh, of the of effect lasts for four to seven days and it takes about uh, 10 days before the platelets are replaced and present as elevated bleeding time but purpura is unusual now what is purpura as you can see this condition is known as purpura okay in which there is accumulation of the blood cells under the skin so this condition is known as purpura Okay, so in summary, the platelets are vital securing uh, hemostasis. The platelet addition, activation, aggregation are key steps in the formation of temporary hemostatic plug. The primary function, the normal count is range between 1.5 to 4 lakhs. And uh, the platelet deficiency <clears throat> results in pechia and uh, purpura. Then the MCQ, we have the dengue fever leads to decrease in which of the following condition? RBC, WBC, platelets and uh, lymphocytes. And I know all the student knows the answer. Yes, the answer is platelets. So thank you so much. And uh, now we're going to discuss our question. The clinical case scenario, we're going to discuss. Okay, I'm giving you 30 seconds again to give the answer of this question. Okay, so as it is showing a prolonged bleeding time and normal platelet count and decreased platelet aggregation, right? So this occurs in a disease that is known as wall Wilmbrandt disease. So answer is C. Okay, so this is all about the platelets. I hope all the students find this class more helpful. So thank you so much.